Brother Matthew. Video. Great to have you here again, my friends, my math wizards out there, my awesome fifth graders. Yes, it's so cool for you to come by. We're doing lesson 2.2. Yes, it's the second lesson of, you guessed it, chapter 2. What's our topic? Well, it says that we're going to divide by one-digit divisors. Okay, cool. I like division. Our essential question, this is our learning target. It says, how do you solve and check division problems? Oh, I like this. This is kind of like that inverse operation that we were looking at in Chapter 1, I believe. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. What? Oh, that's right. First, we have to unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says here that Jenna's family is planning a trip to Oceanside, California. Oh, my goodness. That's so close to where I live. They will begin their trip in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and will travel 2,754 miles over nine days. If the family travels an equal number of miles every day, how far will they travel each day? All right. And our little helper along the side here says that, yes, you can underline the sentence that tells you what you are trying to find and to circle the numbers you need to use, which is a standard practice of GoMath so that we break the problem into pieces. But I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I am going to underline and circle my numbers, but I'm also going to be thinking about what this division is about. I think it's like, why are we dividing? Well, a couple of key words that come to mind, which I would like to point out. One is definitely the equal number. We talk about the equal number of miles every day. That's usually an indication that we're going to be doing division because we're taking a certain amount and we're dividing it, which is one of the numbers that we're going to circle because this is important. 2,754 miles over nine days. So I'm going to have to circle it here and then also circle it over here because it's very important numbers that we're going to need to have in this. Now, when we think of this right here, we think this is the dividend. And I know some of this is a review. And there's a reason why I want to cover it today, because I'm going to expand on the idea of division as well. But dividend is kind of like we think of that whole part that we are going to break either into equal size groups, okay, or the number of groups. Here, this is the divisor. And this is the number that is going to tell us how many equal parts that we're going to make or size groups. The reason why I say both is because there are two things. One's called partitive and partitive division. And the other one is called measurement division. And the reason I want to cover these two different types of division is because sometimes what we're asked to do is we're asked to put so many of an item in like one bag. So if we, let's just change this to marbles. If we had 120 marbles, well, we may have six bags sitting off to the side. We know the number of bags there are. That's the number of groups. What we don't know is the size of each group. That type of division we call partitive. Now, the measurement is the opposite. Measurement tells us that we're going to put so many of an item in a group, but we don't know how many groups there's going to be. So these are the two differences. So in this problem, it's partitive because we know the number of groups. It's the number of days right there nine days. We already know how many days it's going to take Jenna's family to travel the 2,754 miles. Okay. What we don't know is we don't know how many miles, okay, they're going to travel each day as listed in our problem. Did I underline the sentence that tells you what you're trying to find? Uh, I sort of did. Obviously, it's right here. It's how far will they travel each day? So this is what we're doing. Why is this important and why did I take the time to try to explain the difference between partitive and measurement division is that sometimes people get confused because if you have like a multiplication problem like 8 times 6 equals 48, well remember, I mean both of those are factors of 48 that makes that a, a true statement. However, we could make a contextual problem with this information. We could say I have 8 bags of marbles. I have 6 marbles in each bag. So I have a total of 48 marbles. So the thing that we want to remember is if we were to find the inverse operation that 48 divided by 8 then is going to equal a certain amount. But we could also say 48 divided by 6 is going to equal a certain amount. Well, the 8 here represented, as I gave you the example, were the number of bags. The 6 represented the number of marbles. Do you see that when we divide, we can switch. That divisor could be A, the number of bags we have, or B, the number of marbles in each bag, which is the sized group. I'm not going to go over this every time we do division, but I wanted you to see 
why sometimes students will get confused what they're looking for. So we have the number of days. We need to find out how many miles in each day. Okay, that's all. Just kind of helping you make a better understanding. That's just what Mr. Wara does for a living. <laughs> and they pay me for it, which is also very, very nice. Okay, let's go on to the problem. Now it states here divide. We're going to take 2,754 divided by 9. Use an estimate to place the first digit in the quotient. Okay, we did this in the previous lesson. Estimate 2,700. That's a great estimate. 2,700 is very, very close to 2,754. Here I have my basic fact, 27 divided by 9. Well, that's simply 3, right? And then we have two powers of 10 because I see those two zeros there. Now, if I were to do the reverse, I can see 9 times 3 is 27 plus 2 zeros, 2,700. 2,700. So the first digit of the quotient is in the, all we have to do is look at our estimate. It's in the hundreds place. Cool. Step two says divide the hundreds. And step three is divide the tens and then divide the ones. So we get to do, just kind of go to work. So we know that the nine, okay, represented the number of days. We can't take the 2,000 miles and put 1,000 miles in each one of those days. It won't work. We'll run out. We only have two. That's why we're moving to the 2700 here. Now it turns out that yes, if we had 2700s, yes, we could put at least 100 in 100 miles in each one of those days or we could actually when you think about it, we could actually do 300 miles in each day because that 9 times 3 is 27. Okay? Again, just trying to explain the division here. Make sure that we're understanding. So now we just end up with zero. It's a standard algorithm. I know that a lot of times you just say, "Hey, how many times will 9 go into 27?" And that's fine. Eventually that's what you're going to do. Well, in fact, eventually what you're going to do is you're just going to use a calculator. Okay, that's what's going to happen when you get up in the middle school and the high school. Yeah, more and more things are becoming automated in such a way that we actually have the computer or the calculator do the work for us. But we still need to understand how to solve the problem. That's what's important here. Okay, so now I go ahead and I bring down my five. And what is that? Five tens, right? Because that's in the tens place. Now, that's unfortunate because you can see after we divided the hundreds, we you know, subtracted the 27 and we ended up with zero. Okay, so there are no hundreds. So we divide the tens. That's not going to work. Look at that. We only have five tens. We can't distribute five tens into nine groups or nine days. That's not going to work. So in this case, what we're going to have to do then is we're going to have to say it goes in there zero times. Okay, and the reason why we put a zero up above is because we brought our five down right here. And then we need to divide that next number into the nine. And we weren't able to do it. So because we weren't able to do it, we end up with a zero up top. So of course, zero times is going to suggest five tens again. So now we're going to have to bring down our, that's right, our four. Now, kind of sloppy there, but I think you see there's a four there. Now I can say, yes, nine's going to go into 54. 54 ones, it's going to go in there six times. Now, that's going to be 54, leaving us with no remainder. So we divided the hundreds, we divided the tens, and then we divided the ones. This was the ones. This was the tens and this was the hundreds. And I'm just writing those down just so you get to remember that when we're dividing, this is what we're doing. This is the conceptual understanding. So since, in this case, 306 is close to the estimate of, and we estimated at 300, then the answer is reasonable. So Jenna's family will travel, in this case, 306 miles each day. Now, I know the next page they have you check your work, but I can check our work right now. Take 306, which is our quotient, and multiply it by our divisor, 9. These two together, when you multiply them, should get us back to our dividend, 2,754. Well, there's 54 right there, my simple fact. 9 times 0 is 0. So now I simply add the 5. And then 9 times 3, 27. And now I have my thousands place. There you go. So I put in my little comma, 2,754. It worked out. Woohoo! down below here it does say mathematical practice this is explain explain how you know the quotient is 306 and not 36 well i think that we explain that up above there was a couple of reasons we, a couple of things we could say number one that's a real we call this a pitfall because sometimes what will happen is students won't put that zero up above but how do i know it's 306 and not 36 well my estimate right down below told me that my first digit should have gone into the hundreds place and it did. So if I end up with an answer of 36, well, that would make a lot of sense, would it? Because if I said, well, my first digit in the quotient should have been in the hundreds place, but 36, it's in the tens place. That might be like a big red flag, you know, to say, hey, 
Hold up! I think I went astray. Help! I'm lost in the woods! No, you know, you just, you, you have to quickly acknowledge that and then try to uh, remedy it, okay? Or find a solution and say, wait a second, maybe I made a mistake, and you go back and check. Of course, multiplying here is a great way, and I do believe that this lesson said that it was going to teach us how to do that, so it must be on the next page. So let's take a look. So here it says, connect. Division and multiplication are inverse operations. Inverse operations are opposite operations that undo each other. You can use multiplication to check your answer to a division problem. Well, we talked about that right at the beginning of the video, and I know this has been brought up in uh, an earlier chapter, an earlier lesson, and that is, is that, yeah, if you multiply a number, that the inverse operation is like doing the opposite. So you could move this down to saying, well, then 12 divided by 3 equals 4. We say that these two equations are inverse operations because they're opposite of each other. That's simply what it is. Example. Divide. Check your answer. Since to check your answer to a division problem, multiply the quotient by the divisor. Key right there. The quotient by the divisor. That's why it's really important that you understand what each one of these terms are called in a math problem. If there is a remainder, we're going to add it to the product. Again, another math term. This is the answer to a multiplication problem. The result should equal the dividend. Look, another math term. You see, these words are so important when you can start understanding quotient, divisor, remainder, dividend, product. It helps you understand the math better. Now we have 614 divided by 6. They came up with an answer. They got 102, remainder 2. So it's showing us the steps. So we're going to take the 102 then, because that is the quotient. We're going to multiply that by the divisor, which is 6. Well, 6 times 2 is 12. Basic fact, carry the 1. Here I have 6 times 0. That's a 0. Then I simply add the 1. Sometimes students will actually put a 6 here. They do that so fast in their head, they make a mistake. So the only thing they should go here is a 1. Because 6 times 0 is 0. And then 6 times 1, now we have 6. So we have 612. Now we have the adding the 2. Remember, that was our remainder. So we're going to add that 2 on, and we're going to get 4. 1, 6 here, right in a row. And we have 614. Yes, it matched up with the dividend. Oh my goodness, my arrow like, you blasted him. I know. Now it says, since the result of the check is equal to the dividend, the division is correct. So 614 divided by 6 is, we have to say it again, 102 remainder 2. And we won't be using this remainder too much longer here because we're going to be dividing decimals very soon. But that's how we write for that problem. Now it does say you can use what you know about checking division to find an unknown value. Ooh, I like that. Unknown. Try this. Find the unknown number by finding the value of n in the related equation. And in example a here, we have, it looks like a quotient of 63. We have a divisor of 7, but we don't know what the dividend is. And what is this showing us that we can do? We can take the dividend then, we can say that that's equal to the divisor times the quotient. And that's true, right? We can multiply the quotient and the divisor. That's going to give us a dividend. Multiply the divisor and the quotient. What does n equal? Well, let's go ahead and do that. So 63 times 7 then, that's 21, carry my 2. That's going to be 42 plus 2 is 44. So I end up with a dividend of 441. That's what should go right there in that blue box. Okay, that's the dividend. It's good that you keep practicing the names of all these parts of a division problem so you can get used to using them, seeing which one's the dividend. Okay, let's go to sample B. Now it says we have, oh my goodness, we have a quotient of 125 with the remainder, which we don't know what that is. We have a divisor and we have the dividend. Well, again, we just set up that equation. We know that the dividend is equal to the divisor times the quotient. It's exactly what we did in the previous problem right there, except here now it says plus n. That's what we don't know. So we just put it right in a row. Well, let's do that. It says multiply the divisor and the quotient. It says 752 is equal to 750 plus n. So it says Think, what number added to 750 equals 752? That's kind of obvious. Should be a 2. So that's our remainder 2 that gets added so that that way our equation will be equal. That equation means that is your equal sign. Everything on this side has to be equal to everything on that side. By adding that 2 in there, that would make it even. It'd make our little teeter-totter be straight across, right? 
You know, I'm talking to a seesaw, visa calm. If you have 50 pounds on this side and you have 80 pounds over here, this person's going to be pulling the teeter totter down and that person's going to go up. Okay. So I kind of think of this here. This thing here is called a fulcrum. And that right there, my friends, is your little equal sign. And we need to make sure that those equations are balanced. Okay. Oh no. Is that it? I think that's the end of our video. Woo woo. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. That video flew by. Well, my math wizards, thank you so much for coming by. Please, if you like to be part of this wonderful fifth grade wizard team, hey, why don't you sub or like the video. Maybe you have a comment. Ask me a question anytime, you guys. I am here for you. If I can help you out in any way, please let me know now.